The American Research Bureau reports I Love Lucy episode The Marriage License was the first TV show in history to be seen in around 10 million homes the evening the episode was aired. The year is 1952, and this Dodge Wayfarer was available at your local Dodge dealer for the very last year. But before getting into all of it, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like, the automotive channel that dares you to drive something different, whether that be for daily or recreational use. History, specs, design, but most importantly, show what these cars are like. If that sounds of interest, a channel that you will totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. This 1952 Dodge Wayfarer is currently for sale at Classic Auto Mall, Morgantown, Pennsylvania, with over a thousand cars for sale when recording this episode. Something literally for everyone, financing and shipping available for hours of operation, directions, and to see more pictures of this very 1952 Dodge Wayfarer, be sure to click the link below after the show. 1952 Dodge model lineup consisted of the Wayfarer in the basement, followed by Meadow Brook. Coronet was at the top. Dodge also had a truck line going from half ton all the way to the big commercial. 1952 Dodge Wayfarer could be had as a two door business coupe or two door sedan. It's worth mentioning the sported bout was mentioned in the ads for 52, but only one was produced. The two-door business coupe was only offered until February of 1952, being discontinued because of material shortages brought on by the Korean War, which forced manufacturers to focus on popular models. Dodge would offer the Wayfarer from 1949 through 1952. Meadowbrook Special Series was added to replace the Wayfarer in 1953. 1952 is pretty much a carryover design with just a few minor revisions such as hubcaps, a new trunk handle, red reflectors just below taillights, minor dashboard changes. So let's compare the 50 on top, 52 on the bottom, starting in the front. The body shell looks very similar between these two. Both front fascias are totally different, like the grills, bumpers, Hoods, hood mascots are all completely different. Both have split windshields. Moving to the side profile, which are both virtually the same. The only difference is being, look at the wraparound bumpers. They differ because they got different bumpers. But this side profile, it, it almost looks like a mirror. Mirror probably isn't a good analogy, but they look very identical. The 50 has an external sun visor, which I believe was an option. Hubcaps are different as well as door handles. The 50 has a door handle pad that the 52 doesn't have. Trim even looks the same. The 50 image is flipped. The gas filler is on the same side. Moving aft, bumpers are different as well as taillights and trunk handles. Also in this picture, this one if I could direct your attention to the rear quarter section of the 1950, the one on top, this one has rear gravel guards that wasn't on the previous image. Perhaps it was an option. Moving inside to take a better look at the dash and interior situation, which one do you like better? Let's talk specs. 200 inches long, 73 inches wide, 63 and a half inches tall. It rides a wheelbase of 115 inches. It weighs 3,055 pounds. Price $2,030, which is equivalent to you spending $24,259.83 in the year 2024. Total 1952 Dodge was $206,000 units. Moving on to engine, 230 cubic inch displacement, flathead 6, 3.8 liters. It's good for 103 horsepower at 3,600 RPM, 190 pound-feet, or 258 newton meters at 1,800 RPM, with a bore of 3.25 inches and a stroke of 4.3 inches. Compression is 7 to 1, features 4 main bearings. 
when backed with the gyromatic semi-automatic transmission, 0 to 60 could be had in 22.1 seconds with a theoretical top speed of 83 miles per hour while achieving around 13.7 miles to the gallon and these are all just baseline jumping off numbers mileage may vary let's talk styling look at these headlight bezels running lights and or turn signals just look at these bumpers riders and or bumperettes also notice this piece behind it that's interesting dodge nice and proud up here comes to a bit of a point nice ram horns mascot there is a center line on the hood going back towards the split windshield. The hood is relatively smooth, it just has different levels. This car does have a cowl vent, as well as opposing windshield wipers. Check out all of the stainless around the windshield. This car also has drip rails that start at the base of the windshield. They come up, they run the length of the car, they end right there. The wheel wells are rolled back behind. Check out this bright work that ends right where the front door begins. Wayfarer, gyromatic. This car has rocker molding. It's relatively smooth side profile. Gas filler cap is on the driver's side. Same thing with the wheel wells back here. They're just kind of rolled. Just the brake lights. License plate light is inside the bumper. Check out this trunk. It goes back quite a ways. Full size by supply spare over here on the side. The load floor is relatively low and the trunk goes up really high. Getting inside, but before we do, just look at how this door handle is designed. This door's got quite a bit of the store's got quite a bit of heft to it. Also, it's a pretty big door, all things considered. That is the furthest it opens to allow that much access into the cab. This feels like a broadcloth. Down here, it's like a vinyl. Armrest door handle to pull the door shut, door handle to get out, window crank for the big window. Man, that was like a Nash. Like two two cranks and it's up. It's like two and a half vent windows. Coming down inside the pedal box down here. High beam switch, clutch, brake, gas pedal. Emergency brake and or handbrake. Take a look at this interior. These seats are still covered with the seat covers they like to put on the cars back then. Here is what over the hood looks like. Here's what first person over the hood looks like. There's tons of space underneath this steering wheel in between my hand and my lap. 
On to the button switches and knobs, starting on the left and moving right, amp meter, gasoline gauge, speedometer with odometer, notice the 100 mile per hour figure is flipped so you can see it better, oil pressure, coolant temperature, headlights, panel lights, windshield wipers, key slash ignition, lighter, radio, which was an option that this car doesn't have, clock. Up above, sun visors are on the big side rear view mirror there in the center also another sun visor over there on to the glove box test here is our test subject here is my hand for reference here is the glove box in question what's got me that it fits in there no problem at all and i bet you will shut too and it shuts getting in the back and that is how much space you have to get back there so here's what the front looks like from the back let's take a quick gander at the greenhouse or the pillar to glass ratio it's really nice and airy in this car. So what visibility looks like out the back. Notice the back glass wraps around. And that is a pretty big parcel shelf back there. I'm sure you guys in the comments section, if you had this car when you were growing up, your parents had this car, you probably slept back there. It's, it's big enough. There aren't any coat hooks, but there is a dome light the seat back profile it's 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 rather nice it's it's a bit it's it's reclined ever so slightly armrests are connected to it the seat back does dip down a little bit but the bench isn't wide so knee space got adequate knee space the windows do go down back here and that's all the further they go down so a little bit more than half, I'd say two thirds of the way down. Getting under the hood. The hood release is right here and you push it away from you. With the secondary catch being right here, right underneath the D. Get straight up. It's, it's counterbalanced really nicely. It's got one gigantic horn pointing down. Look at the metal. So check out how far this sits back. Radiator sits back in here. Flathead six with oil bath air cleaner. Six volt battery here. The solenoids right there. The brake stuff isn't on the firewall so I'd, I'd assume that it's in the floor on the positive side spacious both front and rear nice full instrumentation dashboard which looks very similar to what chevy was doing in the late 40s huge trunk and camera did fit in the glove box against it some will say the styling is a bit stodgy all right now it's time for Would You Rather. Two scenarios today. In the first scenario, would you rather have a 1952 Chevy or 1952 Dodge Wayfarer or 1952 Ford? I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free to pause the video. Moving on to the second scenario, a bit outside the box as they generally tend to be, but which one would you rather have? 1952 Nash Rambler or 1952 Dodge Wayfarer, or 1952 Kaiser Henry J. Once again, I'm gonna leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free, pause the video. Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to get both the name of the band and the song title correctly in the comment section will have your comment pinned to the top of it. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below. Maybe you have a YouTube channel and would like to collaborate. I am totally up for that. In fact, 
there is a new segment that I would really love to do for the channel would be called part of the conversation where we go out and interview different YouTubers that do classic cars or just cars in general could be you could have a YouTube channel you could you could just be in the automotive sector whether that be an insurance provider or in the actual hobby part of it reach out to me send me an email because this segment that I'm proposing it's going to be pretty cool lots of people do podcasts it's kind of sort of like a podcast but Everybody watching it, the moment that the video comes out, will be part of the conversation, just like the live shows that we've been doing on the channel. I thought it would be really cool to have you guys part of the conversation. What do you guys think? Until next time, toodaloo! What's your happy dance, Chloe?